On this episode, we have a zero tolerance policy for tedium. Some tedium is okay. Are you sure about this? It's gonna be fine. It's, it's fine. It's no problem at all. And for once, it is actually no problem at all. This is fun. Hi everybody, this is Christian. This is Laser Lives Academy. This is our advanced schmuck tutorial. This is episode 53. It's like, it's like Gen X Taylor Swift, you know? You don't know about me, but I'm feeling 53. Hey, old people jokes. <laughs> We're not there yet. I'm not quite there yet, but eventually I will be there. Right, so uh, today we are going to uh, we are going to do a lot of brain work, <laughs> brain surgery. We are going to do a lot of different behaviors for the enemies, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be fine. Um, let's go uh, brain edit because I wanted to do a little thing. I know we've been last episode was a lot of UI work. What is a lot of like uh, metadata? It's not that exciting. Uh, today is also we're gonna start off with something that's not quite as exciting. There is one thing about this editor which I forgot to, to do, but we should do it now. And that is the background. You see how the background is just like gray and that's okay. We didn't we don't want to bring in the level. We don't want to have the level scroll underneath. I, I don't think that's what it would be. That would be wise. However, uh, something I don't like about this editor right now is that we don't see the movement of the background. I want to see at least some kind of movement of the background. Um, so I would love to draw a grid underneath the um, underneath the, the thing, underneath the, the, the enemies that scrolls at the speed at which the background is scrolling. Um, so I have a, um, a better feeling of how a movement of an enemy on the screen will look. Because, you know, if you make the enemy move slowly downwards, but the background is also moving slowly down or upwards. Uh, wait, upwards or downwards? Uh, it's moving downwards, yeah. So, <laughs> So if you make the enemy move slowly downwards at the same speed as the background is moving, then actually the enemy will look stationary. Uh, and I want to account for that, right? Okay, so let's do that real quick. Um, so here, when we draw, mm -hmm, draw menu, draw menu, yes, draw menu, I, I understand. Um, where do we draw the background? Is, is what I'm thinking here. CLS 13. Oh, that's just like that's just like that's just like it. Okay, so um, I'm just do like a I'm gonna do like a dumb uh, grid for now, and then we're gonna see later what if there's a smarter way of doing this. Let, let's go um, zero to sixteen do, and then I'm gonna draw a line. Um, oh, by the way, this is supposed to be fill p fill pattern, and now we have to r look for the yeah. This seems like a good fill fill pattern, right? Um, so these horizontal lines, right? That's going to be for the vertical parts of the grid. So we're going to go line i times 16, um, 0, i times 16, 128. And the color, uh, I'm going to pick color number 5. Ooh! He can't, how does he get away with all the same jokes? Always the same jokes. <laughs> Mambo number five. Um, uh, there we go. That's the net second fill pattern that I was looking for. <laughs> you just have to mash the button. Okay, so I have to actually for for you two guys to know which one is the right button. Where was also oh, this was Z. This this fill pattern is Z. Shift Z. And this other fill pattern is uh, somewhere down here. Yeah, yeah, here. Uh, there, 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 there. That is Y. Y and Z. Hmm, okay, okay. Right. Um, so this is we're just going to repeat this and it's going to be for the horizontal lines, right? So it is going to be 0, uh, 128, comma, like this. Okay, let's see how this looks. Ooh, okay, we need to turn off the fill P. At the end. Okay, yeah, that seems, seems cool. Um, wait, is 16 the right number? I think 8 is the right number. 8. Yeah, yeah. 7 is not good, right? Is 7 good? Maybe we should be good with 7. 
Oh, seven is actually good. Okay. Cool. Now let us animate this. Um, we're going to have a little scroll value. Scroll equals zero. Um, and we're actually going to sc always scroll. There's never going to be a situation where we're not scrolling, I think. So we can put it in the UPD function, uh, like here, and not in UPD, but in a. Or actually, hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to put it in here. Scroll plus equals 0 0.2. We're going to hard code this. Uh, yeah, the scroll is currently not affecting, <laughs> not affecting our position. Um, right, so for the horizontal things, we're going to go like scroll. Plus scroll. And then plus scroll. Plus scroll. Yeah. And you see a problem here, right? Oh, first of all, we have the problem that we just scroll. <laughs> that we are running out of stuff. Um, we should do like a, a scroll equals uh, scroll modulo 16, right? <laughs> yeah, we're still running out of them, but, but we can fix that. Yeah, uh, let me see. Draw. Um, so we're going to go my... Yeah, actually, the vertical lines don't need to scroll. Uh, the horizontal lines. Wait, wait, which one? The horizontal lines don't need to scroll, right? We don't. We don't need that scrolling. We can just keep it. Keep it around, because the horizontal lines, like those, the vertical lines. The vertical lines don't scroll. They just stay there. The horizontal lines, they do scroll. So we want to start with minus one. Yeah, and now it works. But you see, it looks a bit fu funky. It looks weird, right? It, the, it looks like, like the horizontal lines, these move like they're as if they're moving, but the vertical lines don't move. And I mean, yes, that's what we just did. The vertical lines are not moving now. We, this, these are the vertical lines, so you're not moving now. But like, even if you make them move, if we, if we put a scroll in here, right? We put scroll in here. They're still not moving. They still f seem like they're not moving. And, and that's weird, right? And the reason for that is because of our fill pattern. The fill pattern is is always the same. The fill pattern is kind of like something that is kind of like a screen, like, like a pattern that you put on top of the screen. And everything else is moving kind of like underneath the fill pattern. The fill pattern is always fixed in place. Um, so in order to to make it so so yeah so the line is moving but the pattern on the line is is not moving and so that it looks like it's the line is not moving. And in order to fix this, um, we need to actually f change up the fill pattern depending on what um, you know what the scroll value is. Um, so it's it's one of those little details and this is also something that will probably come up. You have to see how this works. If we ever, because people requested that we make shadows underneath things, right? So things drop shadow underneath, like enemies and then the player. Or you might do that. Um, so we will have to draw circles underneath the player. And then maybe we're going to use a fill pattern there. So it's kind of like dithered. So it's not like just like a solid color. So we can see some of the background shining through. But the problem is then if you move around, that fill pattern will not move around and it might look funky. So we might have to do some funky stuff here. The funky stuff looks like this. Basically, we'll have to do like a if scroll, I'm gonna floor the scroll. If floor scroll, scroll modulo two, if that's zero, so if, if on, on even scroll values, uh, then else end. Uh, so sometimes you do this fill pattern, sometimes you do a different fill pattern. Uh, and I actually have this prepared here. So basically this fill pattern in one case and this other fill pattern in the other case. This is just like the same fill pattern, it's just like moved by one pixel or like inverted, so to speak. Um, it's it's just so so like when when the line's supposed to move one by one pixel down, then we move the fill pattern with it one pixel down. And then when it moves down again, then we can like reset the fill pattern. It's just, see, now it works. Now it looks nice. Little details, little details. They make up a lot. So now that's really nice because now we can see, you know, um, if I make something move at a, 
a speed of 0 0.2. Let's go like this. Uh, that's the speed, uh, that's the heading. Okay, there we go. Uh, zero, yeah, see? So now if it's moving, let's, let's make it go like really for very far. See now when it's moving downwards, it's kind of looks looks a little bit like it's if it's stationary. We have some problems here in that as um, there is sometimes a bit of a cobblestoning against the background and that's something that we're gonna have to fix. Like the sub pixel values between the position of the player and the scroll value are not quite lined up. So it feels like the, the, the ship is still detached from the background. It doesn't seem as if it's quite stationary. Sometimes it works like this. Now it, now it looks nice. But sometimes it doesn't quite look nice. So we have to deal with that later on. But yeah, yeah, okay. So now we have the background. The background has a nice little little grid happening. This is what we wanted. Now let us turn our eye towards creating uh, some test enemy, enemy behaviors and using them as an inspiration to expand our brains. First, let us do some prep work. <clears throat> Um, let us go to load cow shmup and let us, uh, we need some more sprites, we need some helper sprites. I want to be, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, okay, it's not completely necessary, right? It's not just like, absolutely, but it's, it, it's kind of nice, it's kind of nice. It would be nice to have some, uh, some helper sprites. Um, some additional helper sprites and I actually prepared some stuff. So this, again, this uh, file will be here. If you want to download in the doobly-doo, it's gonna be a download link for the file. And I can always provide the code before and after each episode. Uh, but yeah, let me just drag and drop a, a PNG in here. Doop. This is not, this didn't work. I have to click on something. Uh, let me click here. Doop. Okay. So this is just like the same, uh, the same, the same Zaku enemy, uh, the same popcorn enemy, but just like palette swapped basically. Um, the idea here is that we want to, uh, we want to create a bunch of enemies that look, just visibly look different so we can like differentiate them. And then we're gonna, we're gonna try to change the behavior. And the reason why I want to definitely the enemies to be, look visibly different is that you know, I wonder if there's a problem with an enemy, I want to like in the game, I want to see which enemy is causing the problem, right? And also this gives us a bit of an opportunity to um, test our tool pipeline to see if all the tools work the way they're supposed to work. It's kind of nice. Okay, so we created, we added the, the um, animation frames for uh, different enemies. And by the way, this is not, this is so that we are clear. All of the enemy sprites right now are temporary, right? <laughs> I'm working on them. I'm working on them in the background. And eventually we will replace them with the final sprites. But now these are just temporary. But also something that we can also test with this kind of, we already know that we probably want to have a bunch of uh, popcorn enemies, small enemies that we shoot, like different shaped small enemies. And this gives us a bit of a test of, you know, how much sprite space do we have. And it's going to be close, but it's not impossible, right? Four, four different popcorn enemies for such a short game is kind of okay. And it's, it doesn't take up that much sprite space with, with our sprite saving uh, procedures. And then, you know, maybe like a bunch of big enemies and then maybe one boss fight and it's gonna be fine, right? It's gonna be fine, it's, it's fine, it's no problem at all. <laughs> uh, let's save this. And then let's go to load sprite dit. So now what I want to do is I want to um, create the sprites that 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 belong to those enemies. So we have U for A, right? Uh, one, two, three, and then fix. See now it would be really great. It would be really great if we could just like copy the UFOA, but uh, no, we can't, right? That's that's a bit of a bum scheme. That's a bit of a bum scheme. Uh, right. So uh, let me let me get into the UFO, UFOA and and just like see. Um, Eight and seventeen is the size. Okay. Ooh. All right. Uh, U F O B. U F O B. U F O B. 
one. Okay, so let me just go through the process and create those sprites real quick. Right, we are finished. Man, this took a, took a, hmm, this was less pleasant than I expected. Now, to be fair, this is kind of like a weird situation where we're trying to copy an existing sprite and change it around. I'm not sure if we're going to have a lot of situation in our game where this happens, uh, but definitely felt like the tools were not quite as comfortable as I wanted it to be. So let me put down some notes uh, for things I want to maybe, maybe want to add. Um, copy tool would be nice. Um, just able to be able to copy data from another sprite. That's kind of nice. Uh, nudge values is also kind of nice. Uh, right now would be nice. It, it, right now it's kind of uh, a bit awkward that you have to press a bunch of buttons to change something by just one uh, one pixel. It would be nice if um, it, it would make sense. Like if you select, for example, the X value that you could press left and right to just quickly change the X value without having to go enter type a number temp enter again every time you know um, and but the real kicker the thing that would really help is kind of like a direct sprite uh, map selection so having like a like a tool where you just go launch the tool it shows you the sprite map and then you just click click and then that will define the sprite i think that would be that would be pretty good, right? That would be that would wouldn't be too bad. That wouldn't be too bad to have something like this, because I was like hunting around for the right pixel value, uh, and I'm pretty sure that will be something that comes up later again, right? So we probably have to have we'll maybe create a bunch of sprites, and then we want to create sprites out of them in the tool, and then hunting for the right value will be a chore. Now I have written down the number of the sprites that we just created. Uh, manually again a bit unpleasant but okay whatever so 31 until 39 yeah these are the sprites that we created and now what we want to do is one want to <coughs> load any edit uh, yeah we're gonna load any animation editor and yeah <laughs> this is not a <laughs> this is not a great edit this is this is very basic I've seen some people in the in the discord do like a animation preview and again that would be kind of nice to have an animation preview here again not something i'm going to do today but um we're doing this test one of the reasons why we're going through the test is we want to see right we want to see if how this plays out when we actually use the tools in production and maybe fix problems as they come up. And we already noticed some problems. Now we don't have to make the tools completely you know super super comfortable some tedium is okay and it wasn't catastrophic right now it was just a little bit tedious and i feel like we can at least like the nudging around and stuff like that is something that would um help alleviate some of the tedium in the future yeah that's the tagline of game development a little tedium is fine <laughs> mm. so let me write this down eight nine and ten are the are the animations that we have and yeah, it would be nice. I'm gonna write this down. Uh, to do. 
Yeah, to have an animation preview. Yeah, it would really be pretty, pretty cool. Just like to have a. Um, to uh, also not just like an animation preview. It would be also good to um, visual sprite selection would be also kind of nice. So we don't have to write down the sprites that we just created, but like maybe just like. Just saying, just saying, maybe. Uh, did I export this? I did not export this. <laughs> I forgot. Always export, kids. Okay, so we got this, we save this, and then we're gonna go to the <laughs> to the er enemy editor. You see how many steps are required? So like alleviating some of the tedium along the way would be kind of nice. Load and edit. Uh, oh, load. Also, I saw some people have like a launcher that allows you to switch quickly between different tools. That might be also maybe a good idea. Uh, right, so we're gonna create uh, three more enemies. Um, this enemy is gonna have uh, eight, animation eight, animation nine, animation 10. Uh, the animation speed is gonna be always the same for all of those enemies. Oops, uh, six, six. Six um, brain. Uh, we're gonna uh, keep brain one for all those enemies for now. Later on, we're gonna switch to different brains when we have created the brains. For now, it's gonna it's okay to have a, a simple brain. Um, HP. Uh, we're gonna make HP. We're gonna make a small HP number. We wanna we wanna revert to the golden standard of uh, fifty. Might be even too much. I'm gonna actually try at 50 if that's okay. Um, but collision box, um, we can reuse the collision box because it's the same kind of sprite, the same kind of uh, popcorn enemy. We might be able to reuse the box for a lot of enemies actually. Um, also something that was really fun to see like when I recreated the sprites is that uh, you can reuse some of the sprites. So for example, the sprite that fixed the symmetry for the uh, for the red UFO, you can reuse it for the different UFOs, so that's kind of nice. And it's nice to see that our system kind of starts working already. Uh, okay, so we created those enemies now. Let's export them. And I'm gonna... No, that's still too much, too much health. Let's bring it down to like 20. I mean, this is something that we're gonna do later on, but also I wanna just blow some, some of, I, you, you, you know me, you know me, you know that I'm, I'm happier when I can blow stuff up and this one can be maybe 50. That feels good. Yeah, maybe, maybe even still too much. Yeah, I think it's even still too much. Let's bring it down to 10, 10 health points for the little guys. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, never mind, never mind. Don't get distracted. Okay, so we have created the new enemies now. So now we can go back to uh, load a brain edit. Uh, and we can start r working on different brains, right? So we can now have different enemies. The new enemies are now appearing here and we can have like the different colored, um, different colored uh, UFOs to test out different behaviors. Now the question is, what kind of behaviors do we even want to create? That's why we did the research before, right? That's why we looked as, you know, they, they made a list. I made a list of all the different enemies that come up in, Aspirate and then GGLS3. So let us just like sketch out some goals that we want to implement in our brain editor right now. All right, so here's some uh, some UFO behavior, some, some enemy behavior that I would love to see. First of all, uh, we already had the kind of behavior that we already implemented this and I kind of like still want to have it. So it's some UFO that flies in and then just flies out from the top of the screen, right? So something that just like does something like this and maybe does a shot, you know, maybe maybe it, it shoots a, a bullet. Uh, like that, that kind of like a very simple popcorn kind of thing. Um, uh, well, actually, no, wait, wait, let actually, I want one that flies in, does a shot 
and then and then continues down. This is the, the kind of like a very basic one, just like flies in, shoots, and continues down. So you have to get out of the way. This is number one. Um, then I want to have number two. Uh, again, still kind of like simple. I want one that comes in from the side because I saw some enemies coming from the side. Comes from the side, does a shot, and then goes down. Then I want to maybe, you yeah, know, simple behaviors. I want to maybe do something else, something uh, UFO that comes in from the top. Uh, oops, from the top. Does a shot. And then I wanted to do like a loop around and then fly back. Like a loop. I want to actually make it make, make it go a turn, right? Like I want, you know, we're going small steps. I do like a sm small turn, a different way of going up. Then I want to maybe something I would love to have is um, an enemy that that comes in, and these are you know very similar behaviors. Don't get me wrong, but we're just like you know testing different. Comes in, and then while it's flying back, it, like it's it, it does uh, it doesn't turn around; it just flies backwards. And while it uh, flies backwards, it shoots at you. Just a lot of shots, just continuously shooting. Something that, that, like this continuous behavior, I want to replicate that continuous behavior. So that's number four. Number five, and this is going to be a bit tricky. I want a UFO that has a bit of a snaky line. Because um, one typical, and it looks really good, uh, one, one typical behavior of popcorn enemies is like have like a like a snake of enemies, like multiple enemies flying behind each other and doing like cool snaky lines. And I've seen people discuss in the Discord how to best pull that off. I think our system can pull off a really nice snaky line, but I've seen other people doing some really advanced system to make it work, like like splines and everything. I don't think we need splines. I think our system can do it. And I want to see if our system, how our system can pull this off. Mm, there's a sixth behavior that I... Yeah, the one that is like an enemy that comes in and then makes a beeline for the player, like tries to catch the player. Uh, but you can still, um, but one that you can still avoid, that you can get out of the way and it will, it won't follow you. Um, because if it like always hones in on the player, that's not actually not really good behavior because then you get hit anyway, unless you shoot it down. Um, but um, yeah, we have to do maybe some smart math there and I think this might be like some custom behavior that we have to implement to make this work but I saw this kind of um, enemy in uh, Esperate and I kind of liked it so uh, maybe maybe we're gonna have that it, it's kind of nice because it feels like the enemies are really reacting to the player's ship and that makes a bit of a dynamic kind of situation and a final thing that I want to implement is um, I want to maybe have, have um, a boss enemy, right? Uh, an enemy that goes, uh, we had like this kind of boss, I think we have a phase in like this in the first, um, in the first, um, in the basic map tutorial, when we have like a big enemy comes from the top and then moves sideways on the top of the screen and then keeps shooting downwards. That's just like, like a very simple enemy that I just want to, I want to see if we can make boss patterns work with this system because that was the original idea. The system should be that flexible that we don't have to program our boss. We do all of our boss behaviors in this system. Let's see. Okay, let's write this down so we don't forget. Um, so, uh, metabrain data. Oh, by the way, we didn't do this, these things. Oh, we're not creating metadata. We have to do these things. We have to fix this. Um, we have to fix the metadata, but first let's write, write down the goals. One, uh, straight attack. Uh, goal number two, sideways attack. Goal number three, uh, I have to look my little illustration. Turn around. And then um, shoot on retreat. Uh, uh, snack. Um, let's call it kamikaze. It might be not quite culturally sensitive. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and then a boss, and that's it. I, you could I could write suicide, but also not good, right? You know what? Let's 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 call this bomb rush. 
yeah, these seems like these seems like reasonable goals. Okay, let's let's uh, address those goals one after another. But first, I want to actually uh, a good thing I wrote it down because we did the UI of the metadata, but we did, are not creating new metadata when when we start when we're creating new brain and we're not deleting metadata when we delete the brain. So, yeah, oof, yikes. Um, let, let us let us let us go to the UI. Yeah, okay, yeah, and command new brain. If we do that, then we're gonna add um, meta, uh, and we're gonna add any an number brain, um, location 64 and 10, and so it's always like at the top of the screen. I want, always want to see the enemy, right? So that's why I want to put it always there. Uh, yeah, that seems good. So now we also want to delete the enemy. Uh, delete, the, delete the metadata and it's here and enter brain so here's when we're deleting the brain and we also want to delete the metadata from the brain meta uh, yeah like this uh, let's save this let's run this let's test this so we have the this enemy here and we have we want to create a new brain so that definitely created new metadata for the brain um, something I want to do is I want to set it up so it's enemy number three. So we see a new, brand new blue enemy. And then here, when we delete this bad boy, then we delete the brain and then brain two becomes this new enemy that we just created. That's what we wanted. All right, we're gonna save this. We're not gonna export this for now. Now let us start doing the thing. So I'm gonna try to Yes, I'm gonna try to make this straight attack. So this is gonna be, let's let's create a new brain for this. It's gonna be uh, any, any brain number. Th or should I just delete all the older brains? Because these are just like test brains. Yeah, just let's delete the older brains. It's gonna be fine. Delete the older brains. Uh, right. Oh, see, now we can test everything. So let us, let me put um, our, our player at the top of the screen, our enemy at the top of the screen. Let's get out. Um, so I want uh, fast, I want it to move fast, right? So let's, let's go like this. That seems good. Um, and now we want to wait for a couple of frames, right? And then after we wait, we want to maybe set the heading to zero, zero. Uh, yeah. See that, oh, yeah, so it seems like we put uh, a string into wait. Mm -hmm. That's good, that's good to know. And in parameters, we are changing it to, an, to a number. This is a bit odd, and honestly. Oh, I, I, I know where, where it's happened. So we created a new line. Yeah, yeah, see how we're putting zeros in here? We need to put like a, a quotation mark zeros. We have to put actual zeros in there. Yeah, see, okay. Um, right, so let's replicate this behavior one more time. Um, we said we want to maybe do wait for 50 and then the heading will stay the same. And then we want to wait for 30 maybe. And then the heading is going to be uh, head is going to be up uh, with a speed of one again. Oh no, actually no, it's, it's going to be one. Why is the heading, we changed the heading. Oh yeah, because one is the same as zero, right? <laughs> exactly, okay. Because one is like going around the circle. Yeah, okay, good. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> let me export this. This is an okay behavior. This is an okay behavior for the enemy. Maybe we could, could maybe go a bit faster. Uh, it's a bit too fast now, see, maybe 1.5. The problem I have here is that it looks a bit wooden, right? It, 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 it lacks a little bit like animation juice. Um, and we already talked about this many times on this tutorial um, or, or on other tutorials as well. There is a thing called like acceleration curves, right? Uh, or like, you know, the principles of animation. Whenever something is moving, it rarely moves linearly. It rarely moves like, you know. <laughs> It doesn't do like this, the way it, does. it looks like an assembly line a little bit. 
what you chat would actually do if it was like a flying object. I mean, okay, UFOs maybe are, are special, you know, but if it was a plane, right, it would like, it would slow down and then maybe accelerate again. You know, it would be, there would be like some kind of inertia to the, to the movement. And I know we talked about how inertia is bad in shmups when it, it's applied to the, uh, to the player ship, but it's not bad when it's applied to the enemy ships because you know things look more natural when, when they move in with inertia, and we don't quite have the ability to animate um, uh, animate you know the speed. We want to maybe the UFO to slow down and to accelerate again. So let us add let us add brain commands that allow us to animate the speed. All right. So immediately, uh, so we we did that by the way. So let us do animate speed, right? This is something that you want to do. Uh, I'm going to create a new command, and this command is going to be ASP for animate speed. Now in the, is it tools? What is it? And it's enemy, right? Right here, when we are doing the commands here, right? So let us do, let us do something like else if um, CMD equals ASP animate speed right um, in this case um, well hmm, what are how we're going to animate speed I think a good idea is to do something like um, a new like creating two new parameters two new properties to the enemies and this is uh, the first one is going to be ASP I'm going to just call it ASP um, ASP T the target of the animation speed um, so the way I want this to work is then that the, the two parameters for ASP is going to be first is like the target, the, the target speed that we want to achieve at the end of the animation of the speed. The animation is a certain value and we want to make it animate, we want to change it over time until it reaches some kind of target uh, value. And so the first thing is going to be ASPT, that's going to be animation speed target, right? Um, and we're going to um, set, put parameter 1 into this. And then we're going to go ASP S, ASPS, and that's going to be animation speed, speed. <laughs> the speed at which the speed is changing. <laughs> and we're going to dump the parameter 2 in, in here. So it's going to be like a very si simple system where every frame um, we're going to add something to the speed until it reaches its target. And when it reaches its target, we're going to stop animating. Um, that's my, that's my, that's my ID here. Okay. So, um, here we're going to do if E dot ASP T, the target is set to something, then E dot uh, ASPD plus equals E dot ASP S, <laughs> animation speed, speed. <laughs> So we add something to the speed, and I'm gonna go if ABS. Um, well, let me let me just spell it out. What 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 exactly is happening? So if E A S P T mm, minus E S P D is smaller than E A S P. S, A, S, P, S, then. So basically, I, here I'm checking if we reach our target. And if we reach our target, then we're going to go E, um, S, P, D equals E, A, S, P, T. We're going to set our speed to the target speed. And we're going to go E, A, S, t equals nil. We're going to set that to nil in order for this not to be executed anymore. Just like you turn it off, basically. Um, the only ch the thing is like this check here is a little bit of a wonky thing because we sometimes the speed is going down, sometimes it's going up. I uh, want, want to make sure that if, if the difference between our target speed and our current speed is smaller than the rate at, we are, at which we are changing the speed, which means that we like our like adding or subtracting won't get us closer to the, our target value anymore. Um, then that means that we re basically reach the, speed, the target speed. But the problem is with that is that sometimes, you know, the difference is negative, sometimes it's positive. So uh, we have to do an absolute value. So ABS, which strips off the sign. It always turns everything positive. Something like this, right? 
Mm -hmm. So if the, posit if the positive difference between a target and current speed is smaller than the rate at which we are changing it, it, that means that we are so close to the target speed that we can basically call it and say like, it's fine, it's fine. Um, yeah, and then we set it to nil and that is gonna be it, right? Right, so let's see if this works. Okay, um, oh, I immediately see a problem. I would love to be able to like insert a line somewhere and I can't do that. Mm, how it burns. Yeah, see now I would love to be able to set, uh, after the heading, I want to maybe animate Im immediately, but I cannot do that anymore. I have to like delete the whole thing. Uh, so let us put this into the uh, to-do list of maybe that would be nice to have. Um, to do insert lines. That would be nice. That would be kind of nice. I don't know. I don't know how best to solve this problem though. Maybe we need like a. Uh, oh man, we maybe we have to hold it or something. Ah, it's it's tough. It's tough. Okay, never mind. Um, yeah, so we have to delete all of this stuff here, right? We have to delete it. And we're going to go ASP. And right now it's not animating, um, but we can, for example, do like minus 0 0.1. And you can see how it's stopping. See, now it's stopping. Now it's stopping faster. And now it's stopping slower. Oh, actually, it's it's probably a rounding problem that you. Oh no, it's actually it's stopping. It's just very very slow. <laughs> and we can also make it turn around because we, when you set the target to minus one, it will stop and it will return. Yeah, baby. Yeah, this is this is getting. Hmm, this is nice. This is nice. Uh, okay, uh, we're gonna wait for 50. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, mm -mm. So let us make it, uh, let us animate to zero and let us make it like this. Oh, it's too fast. That's way too fast, 0 0.1. Oh no, but I want to maybe enter with higher speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's, that's better. 0 0.1. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> those variables are very sensitive. But it's good that we have the preview. See, it, it kind of like pays off now. Mm, actually, we might, might not want to enter that quickly. Uh, maybe 1.5. 1 I kind of like this, this floaty enter. And then ASP. Uh, 0 0.021. Oh, it's actually <laughs> 1 uh, 0 0.02. 1.5. Uh, I'm going to do a longer wait. See, now it comes in and then accelerates out. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Um, I think. I don't like the break. I think the breaking should be a bit more aggressive. Yeah. Maybe even more aggressive. 0.6, make it faster. It, it just feels like it's, it's a bit sluggish when it comes in. Seven, um, let's go seven. Oh yeah. Let's go eight. Now we need to break faster. You can see that all the different values are related. If I start with a higher speed, then I need to break faster in order to kind of like stop at the same point. It's kind of interesting how everything is, is like uh, linked together. So we make the speed two, initial speed two, yeah, yeah. Slightly slower breaking, yeah, yeah. But now maybe we want to actually accelerate out with a speed of two. Yeah. This is fun. 
Um, maybe we actually don't want the, the UFO to just stand there, right? Maybe we can actually want to make it go a bit, like retain some speed, right? And then we could maybe even uh, uh, make it uh, decelerate. Oops. Um, yeah, something like this. Man, I still, um, I still feel I, I need a way to insert something because maybe now I want to maybe wait so it doesn't um, animate the speed immediately, but actually it waits for a couple of uh, seconds and uh, edit, inserting lines is kind of important now. I feel like it's kind of important. Uh, but you know what? Um, that's something we maybe do in the second episode. For now, I want to maybe uh, create a second, uh, a second brain. Right, um, so let me set up a second brain here right now. And because the second um, behavior that we want to have is we want to have the UFO come in from the side. And this is really just like a test for our setup system. We can make it still red for now. Um, uh, we make it go uh, all the way to the side and we're gonna put it at 64 or so. Uh, let's make it maybe at less at six, maybe 48 over there, right? Uh, we're gonna go export. And now the heading uh, is gonna be 0 0.5. That's not good, 0 0.25, yeah, that's good. Um, now let's see. We yeah, one of uh, 35 minus one, right? Um, 0 0.35 minus one, uh, minus 0 0.1. Oh, wait. No, it's, it's correct, and we want to eight. Oh, it's weight, we want to ASP. Yeah, that's good. And then I'm gonna wait for 80. Then we're gonna set head to uh, zero, yeah. And then we're gonna animate the speed to what? Uh, to 0 0.05, uh, to 0 0.05. But again, it's kind of like we kind of want to maybe do it like a wait in between there. It feels like, ah, and it's kind of, Hey, he is Christian from Future. So um, I'm gonna help out Christian from past year because he's kind of struggling to explain the problem that we're having here. The problem that we're having here is that the positioning of the enemy on the screen where it ends up being on the screen is, um, is influenced by a lot of factors. And it's kind of difficult to um, control one of those things without also influencing the position of the screen. So for example, here in this case, um, we have a certain heading and a certain speed, the speed is two. And if I say like, oh, that looks good, but I want the, you know, I want to have exactly this kind of movement with the uh, UFO ending up exactly the same position. I just wanted uh, the animation to play out faster. So I'm gonna increase the speed, right? I'm gonna increase the speed, but that makes the enemy go to the completely, you know, the different position on the screen. So I would like to have tools that allow me to, you know, pin the enemy to a certain position on the screen. Uh, but change the speed of the animation. And we don't have these tools right now, we're gonna have to come up with some of those. I want to have better control of where the ship ends up on the screen. Um, and uh, yeah, also undo would be also nice, but you know, we, can't, we can't have everything. But let's write down those, um, those to-do lists. So maybe um, uh, better position control. Inserting lines is kind of important. Oh, by the way, and also another problem that I, I want to also solve. Oh, by the way, I haven't saved this. Uh, good thing that I recorded all of this. Let me replicate this real quick. Yeah, okay, I think that was that was roughly kind of like what we had previously. There's another thing I want to add, and that's something I just th thought about right now, is like this attack part of it, right? The attack part, the when it goes down, that's the, the same here, right? Like this is the same value. So it would be maybe nice if we could just like make 
like reuse parts of a, maybe a code from a different brain. So we could maybe switch brains or something. That would be kind of interesting, I think. Something maybe to keep in mind in the future. But um, but yeah, uh, I'm, again, I'm going to export this. Um, uh, something like change brains, question mark? But yeah, for now, it has been a long episode. Maybe it has been extra long for me because I have to create all the sprites. Let's move on to the doggy zone. Yeah, okay, so we had like, we have this, we did the straight attack. We did kind of the sideways attack, kind of. I mean, we have it for sure. Um, next up is gonna be the turnaround, which we can't quite do. And that's gonna be the goal for the dog is on. Just continue going through this list of enemy behaviors. And maybe you have your own enemy behaviors that you wanna create and create functionality to make these things happen. Also maybe think about uh, inserting lines and how to make this work and also how to how do we get better control over what is happening. All of these things are the goals for the doggy zone. Yes, yes, yes. And at the end of each episode, as always, I would like to extend a huge thank you. Thank you so much for supporting this show to all the people who are supporting this show on coffee.com. Mm -hmm. Means a world to me, guys, especially now that <laughs> we're getting to the end of the tutorial. This has been a long, long project. Uh, I also wanted to read out a comment this time around. This is a comment from the Agent APM. And uh, they say on episode 23, I get that O N two algorithms are easy, but why O oh, Y bubble sort instead of insertion sort, which has better optimistic optimistic cases? Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, what Agent APN is talking about is that we use bubble sort for the schedule editor to sort the enemies by uh, spawning time. And yeah, sort, bubble sort is an algorithm that I wrote from scratch uh, in that episode. And uh, the agent APM is lamenting that insertion sort, different algorithm, would have been uh, is, is as complex, is similar complexity, but it works better in these cases when the entire array that we're sorting that if that's on almost in the right order of things. Um, yeah, this is man, this is a whole topic. This is like one of those computer science pet subjects where you know when you learn when you go through computer science courses, you know you inevitably. Uh, end up doing sorting algorithms and weighing different algorithms against each other. So maybe it's a good subject to kind of like get into the thought process behind algorithms and again weighing different different pros and cons of different algorithms. And there's like so many different approaches too. It's kind of fun to get through this. Um, yeah. So I read some uh, actually some articles where people are um, uh, dunking on double bubble sort because it. it <laughs> It's true. It's undeniably true that it is one of the worst sorting algorithms. <laughs> it's it doesn't get much worse. I mean, it, no, actually, it does get a lot worse. But bubble sort is is quite a, an underperformer. Um, that's absolutely true. And actually, a lot of people um, I've, I've read articles that where people suggested that maybe we shouldn't teach bubble sort because because it's so bad, <laughs> but it's so popular at the same time. It's kind of weird that the the worst one of the worst uh, sorting algorithms is also the most popular. It's kind of like it would be weird if you know the most popular food in a restaurant was also the worst food. <laughs> It is also kind of interesting to consider why bubble sort is so popular, even though it's so um, so uh, inefficient. And I think you know the ease of understanding it and encoding it is it plays a big role into it. Some people I've seen some people argue that bubble sort is not easy. That's actually insertion sort is also you know, easy, but uh, insertion sort has a bit more like logical steps that you have to follow. And bubble sort seems like always so simple because we're always comparing two neighboring values with each other. That's all you did, and then you. Sometimes swap them and you don't swap them. These are very simple steps that you kind of can memorize in your head very, very easily, and you implementing it is easy. It's not how a human being would sort a deck of cards, for example. You wouldn't just compare two cards against each other. Um, a human being, when if they have to sort, for example, a deck of cards, they would do probably something more like insertion sort, which is like you know you take a card, you take another card, you put them in order, then you get and you draw another card from the deck and you see where it belongs in the already sorted uh, deck of cards. Um, yeah, so that's that's insertion sort, and maybe we should have coded that instead. Um, that has a slightly better um, better algorithm, but there's way more efficient ones. Um, something to, that is important and that we need to consider is that in this specific case, and that was something that just happened during export, so it doesn't happen often, and it doesn't have to happen quickly. And in this kind of situations, it's fine to use a bad sorting algorithm. It's completely fine. I definitely wouldn't 
be using this algorithm if that's something that you know happened every frame or something like this then definitely i would reach for a way more efficient algorithm but i think there is the value in you know Again, having an algorithm that you understand in your head is easy to explain, that you understand also how it arrives at the results very easily, that you can code from scratch, and that you understand what it does. So if something goes wrong, you know what you did wrong. You know, it's it's kind of like that there's a value to bubble sort. I'm gonna I'm, I'm a bubble sort defender. I think that's in, in, in a lot of cases bubble sort is just enough. And also there's a very important uh, point which I read in an article which I wished I still had, which is I read once in very cool opinion where it's like the opinion was uh, the opposite case where it's like why do we even do the sorting algorithms why do we obsess so much about the soldering sorting algorithms because we are currently in a situation with computer science and computers in general where these things don't really matter that much anymore like a sorting algorithm will usually not it's not going to be the thing that will bog down the software software currently in general is in a horrible state uh, computer science is in a horrible state. Uh, you, you can tell, like apps on your iPhone and everything, they don't really work that often that well anymore, right? It's, it's like everything is just like really slow, even though computer is getting so much faster, it seems like nothing is, is fast anymore. I've recently, you know, refurbished a Game Boy Advance, and it was just like, stick it in, turn it on, and it just works. And then do that same thing with a console. You have to download updates and it's just like so sluggish. And sometimes you press a button, nothing happens. And this is like this, this huge, powerful, incredible machine. And somehow there's always like some kind of delay and some kind of like problem. But those things are not caused by bad sorting algorithms. They are caused by ridiculously overblown infrastructure that is running on those machines. You know, JavaScript and, and libraries and huge things that are built on top of each other. And then you are doing your work on, on, a, on, a, on the shoulders of giants who are standing on the shoulders of giants who are standing on the shoulders of giants. These are the things that are bogging down computer, computer programs these days. I don't know, just some interesting thoughts that I want to share with you. Um, if you want to use a more efficient algorithm for sorting, go ahead, knock yourself out. Um, I, in this case, I didn't use one because I don't think it was necessary. Right, so we're working on the brains. Next time around, we continue working on the brains and we uh, implement some more of our beautiful, uh, you know, sample enemies. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.